Hey everybody, it's Eric and Roy, and this is Hatchet Cast episode four. And today we're going to be doing a full length episode, and it's going to be about Roy's favorite word, recce rifles. And uh, we're definitely going to be picking a new term for that, which I think was what was it, Roy? We're going to go with general purpose rifle. General. Because I think most people misinterpret as far as what they're actually trying to do <laughs> as a rec- misinterpret- recce rifle. <laughs> misinterpret. Misinterpret. <laughs> <laughs> okay, keep that. Whatever. Yes, we do misinterpret. <laughs> <laughs> recce a lot and so we're going to cover that subject um it's just a hot topic right now also uh we do not have a title for this playlist we're going to do several episodes on this topic and so please if you have a suggestion comment below on what you think the title of the playlist series should be uh probably about four to five episodes is what we're going to do um but yeah what are we going to cover in those episodes uh well so today we're going to be covering what is recce and then we're going to talk about the new term that we've come up with called general purpose rifle i'm going to go ahead and say that we came up with it uh because everybody's saying recce rifle which is i think giving off the wrong impressions uh and then we're going to talk about some considerations for that general purpose rifle that you might have and things that you're not thinking about as well as what our rifles look like for florida in our environment and and stuff like that and at some point in time we'll jump into gear oh yeah outfit kit all that yes. Kind of stuff. So yeah. in other series, it's going to be gear related, um, some techniques. Uh, it, these days, it's just important to know these skills. I feel like they're going to be very important to know uh, in the future. Yeah. Things to take into consideration with, with training and everything. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Whole aspect, whole aspect or whole concept type thing. Yeah. Um, so what is recce? Uh, that's a good question, Roy. Well, recce is not a tool it's not a piece of equipment it is a mission sta- mission statement right so uh recce stands for is short for reconnoiter or recon which is short for reconnoiter uh, and that's pretty much just getting intel or observing something right so the military uh even even law enforcement they do recon on a house a target a suspect uh military does an, an, an objective um and they pretty much are just gathering intel it's not it definitely not something where you are looking to engage somebody, right? Um, unless you're setting up an ambush and you're doing some recon before an ambush, but even before an engagement, during your recce portion, you are not engaging anything. You're just observing. Um, so it's interesting that right now there's a lot of rifles being built specifically for reconnoitering or recon when uh you know the very first recon style rifles in mo- in this modern area era were uh car 15 from vietnam you know yeah you see a lot of people building out rifles that are very similar uh in that 14 and a half 16 inch type range yeah. with a low power variable optic on top of it right but is that something that fits every environment for yeah, I mean, I mean that's 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 what I yeah I mean it d- that is a good question. Does it fit every environment? I feel like that's why kind of we wanted to go away from like you and I are talking like we got to get yeah. away from this term of recce rifle because people are building a rifle with these types of things on it without taking in consideration their environment, where they're living, their lifestyle, what they're wanting to do, their purposes, etc. You know, what do you think their main goal is? Is actually when they're coming up with that? Do you think it's just primarily as a hey i just want a different setup or do you think actually people are looking for a rifle that is like whatever when the, when the crap hits the fan that can kind of do a little bit of everything do you yeah. think that's what like most that's people's the goal rifle is i'm grabbing yes if, yeah. if crap hits the fan and that is the rifle that i'm going to grab because i don't know what i'm getting into so it's pretty much it covers all my bases right so like I'm not going to go grab a 20 inch gun. I'm not also going to grab my 10 3, you know. Like yeah, so I'm they're trying They're trying to build a do all rifle yeah, and, call, much. and calling it and a recce. And slapping recce on it. And slapping recce on it, on yeah. it versus saying, hey, this is truly my general purpose rifle as far as what I'm going to probably grab and go based off of my environment. Right. And it's going to do the most for me, give me the most capability in my area. Yeah. And that's really what they should be looking at it yeah. from, from yeah. that perspective. Yeah, I, I agree. And that's. And that's kind of what we're going to jump into today, and that's why we chose, chose the per, uh, term, chose the term, chose the term. I keep looking at Roy; he's got these big, giant Princess Leia headphones on. Uh, Listen, I ordered new ones. <laughs> uh, the term "general purpose." So, 
what are I mean, like you get people that come in all the time. Asking yeah, I get a lot of people that come in. Hey, I want to, I want to, I want to. You know, what should I get? Blah blah blah. What should we consider? Yeah. You know, what are some things that? What are your goals? Consider? What are you looking for out of the rifle? Right. Yeah. Uh, are you looking? Are you looking for something that is a general? Like, hey, I'm going to be someone that has just one rifle, right? And I need to set that rifle up to cover as as many bases as I possibly can. Or you are you a guy that's going to have multiple rifles? Um, I, be, I definitely believe in having that one general purpose rifle. Unfortunately, there is no rifle that probably does everything perfect. Right, no. There really yeah. isn't. Yeah. So you have to find something that does everything that to a, to a good standard. Yeah, like a jack of all trades. Yeah, jack of all trades. Yeah. And, and, and I really think you should take in consideration as far as your environment, uh, ammo compatibility mm. within your group. Right. Um, and then... And then you're a bit, bit realistically at the end of the day, um, I know I said environment, but what am I what am I trying to say here? Fill in mm, for me. I would say kind of like the setting that you're in there right you now. Thank you. That's what I was trying to get at. Yeah, it just wasn't coming out. <laughs> <laughs> it's good for the headphones are just it's taking headphones. up all your brain energy. <laughs> it's definitely the headphones. Yeah, I, yeah. I would definitely say the environment has a lot to play in it. I mean, if you look at let's just let's just talk about the recon gods of old, the Mac V saw guys. Those guys were running Car 15s. They had the option for an M16, but they ran something lightweight. Yeah. Um, had a moderator on it, full auto. And those guys were moving through some really thick stuff. And they were shooting like a thousand rounds per mission. Yeah. Like they'd go through a thousand rounds. If you guys haven't heard those stories, like John Strecker Meyer's story across the fence. Uh, or listen to Jocko podcast where he's a guest on there. They talk about that pretty in depth. But that was their recce rifle. It was built for their environment. Something that was lightweight, um, and also uh, they had a moderator that made it sound like an AK. So like it was built for that recce mission, right? It didn't have some glass. It wasn't like a DMR. It was what fit their setting, what fit their environment that they were in at the time. Yeah. Talking about our environment here in Florida, we're Central Florida. Um, what what is your general purpose? What's your setup? Mm, that's a good question. Uh, actually, right now I'm kind of, I would say, I'm a thirteen nine. Mm-hmm. Um, I have an eleven five that I gravitate towards, but uh, the thirteen nine is it's a good length to be able to get that accuracy, maintain um, kind of that velocity that I need for mm-hmm. a little bit better effects, you know, at distance. Um, but as far as glass, that's a, that's a good question because our environment, it really differs here. I feel like Florida- It really does. Cool. We have some really thick, heavy areas, Yeah, for sure. Some like heavy brush. Like we have, yeah, right. we have swamp. Yeah. Uh, we, have, we have a lot of different terrain that you, could, that you could cross. I mean, you could be in the middle of the woods and then come out to a massive open field where you, where you have that ability of thousand yard capability. Mm-hmm. So uh, it does, our environment does change a quite a bit. And it changes a quite a bit based on seasons too i know we don't have we don't have a winter we don't have to worry about that kind of stuff but we have we have a rainy season and it gets really nasty and muddy and it gets hard to move around yeah so uh definitely weight yeah overall size i've never seen how like mirage like that's why so going back to glass like i was i'm in between this should i go on lpvo should I go magnifier and red dot? Because I've been training with that a lot. Mm-hmm. Um, LPVO gives me a little bit more look see at distance, but the mirage at certain parts of the day, it's like yeah, there, there becomes the more magnification that you add to it. If you try to use utilize it, if we're I mean in the middle of the summer in Florida, if you're trying to use you know a low LPVO and you're on eight magnification, and you're trying to look out 600 yards, the mirage may be so bad that you can't yeah. even see, identify what you're seeing. Yeah. The magnification doesn't really do anything. For yeah. You. It doesn't do anything for you. You physically got to get closer. Yeah. So, so I yeah. mean, I think I'm gravitating for me personally, I'm gravitating towards almost a ACOG style. So like a fixed scope. So like a, uh, what are those called? Like a prism. Prism. Thank you. Um, yeah and a dot on top or a magnifier and a red dot yeah i would agree and and honestly you could probably state you could you could probably track the acog all the way back into the military is 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 how much it's been used and why it was adapted yeah is because it probably truly does give you some of the most versatility yeah i mean for a general purpose it's a pretty good it's it's a great general purpose especially if you decide 
with that ability to start running a dot on top. Yeah. I mean, I would agree uh, if I if I had to set up my one general purpose rifle, and I'm kind of bouncing around right now also at the same time, yeah. trying to figure out what what that would be. And and we've been we have been shooting in a lot of different types of scenarios and situations, yeah. trying to figure out what that is. Right. Uh, we do a lot of stuff where we're carrying heavy weight. The more weight you put on you, the, less, the lighter you want your rifle. Yeah, ounces equal pounds. And, I mean, an ACOG doesn't weigh a whole lot. Right. It's very simple. Yeah. It's rugged. Yeah. Uh, you throw a dot on top, that gives you a true 1X, you know, fast firing for close-up type stuff. Yep. So, yeah. yeah, I would agree. A yeah. dot on top would probably be my go-to right now on an ACOG. I do like my 13.7 with the 1 to 8. Yeah. But I kind of treat it almost like an ACOG. Mm. I leave it set yeah, on that. leave it at four. Yeah, it's on four. Every yeah. time you pick up my rifle and you look through it, what's it set on? It's on four. It's always on four. Yeah. So an ACOG's already four. I guess the only difference that the LPVO does for me is it gives me a little better eye relief. Yeah. Um, compared to compared to the ACOG. Yeah. But I'm running a dot on top. Yeah. So, and you got a cram riser. So yeah, I got a cram riser, that. which which allows it to bring it a little bit further back. Yeah. So what about, um, what about lights and stuff like that? Mm, I mean... <clears throat> I mean, I think you should have a light on every gun. Um, it's just an extra tool. Like, it's a no-brainer. Um, it's almost like an optic. Like, you just you just automatically should have one. Yeah. Um, the key is is whether you want to have, where you want to place your switch. Are you going to be using that light all the time? Yeah, you we were know? just talking about that, actually, that this morning. We were setting up my 11.5 yeah. uh, with, uh, put, put my laser on it. Uh, got the new B Myers uh, Kiji yeah. Illuminator, which yeah. we'll be talking about that here soon, probably in one of these series yeah, as far as that night capability. Yeah. Uh, do it a shop talk, and we'll probably talk about it in one of these series also, giving you some of that night capability. Yeah. And then also running a white light on it. Mm. Uh, you mentioned to me, I was like, hey, you think I should run this white light switch? Yeah further forward or move it back and you're like hey move it as far back where you physically have to change your hand position yeah and that's definitely something to take into consideration in dn on your white light yeah so. i mean it's a serious thing it really is i mean especially if you're working with other people or giving away your own position that's something you never want to do yeah um, you lose the advantage yeah which i mean <clears throat> if i'm if i uh am going to run a white light i can also unscrew the head so if i accidentally do push onto that button yeah. for whatever reason the the tail switch or the the light head is slightly unscrewed so that way there's no connection so it's, yeah, it's, it's almost point. like an easy way of making sure it stays off yeah what do you think about running some type of cover over it uh you can do covers i've seen guys make covers mm -hmm. out of like bottle caps and duct tape yeah um you can definitely do that uh but you know, sometimes it's just easier to, you know, you can lose a cover. You can actually bump your light thinking, oh, I have a cover on there and it's not there mm -hmm. for whatever reason. Uh, so I've always seen the old school trick of just unscrewing. Just kind of unscrew it. Yeah, just unscrew to, it that way if you do enough. bump it, you're yeah. not, you're not Indian it or anything Correct. like that. Yeah, that's a great point. Yeah. What do you, as far as environment wise goes, um, you really, I think, I think for us that, that 14.5, 16 inch you know 13 7 to 16 inch is probably a pretty solid barrel length yeah uh because we have that ability when you're talking barrel length wise goes you want you want downrange capability right yeah you want ballistics downrange Correct. so if you yeah. do need to engage at 600 yards are you going to be still carrying enough ballistics uh are you still going to be carrying enough velocity to be to be terminal to to create some to inflict some type of maximum damage yeah I and mean, based on your environment where you're at, if you're in the mountains, you probably definitely want that, right? Because yeah, these guys have the ability to take length. some serious long-range shots. serious length, yeah. yeah. I mean, it's it's one of those things where if, you know, a lot of people get wrapped around the axle of having a shorter barrel um, just for maneuverability. And if you want more maneuverability... Go train some more with the rifle. You're For sure, get maneuverability out of yeah, it. Yeah, you you can move around with a 16 inch gun. Yeah, I mean uh, it's easy. not as effective as like a 10-3, but you can do it. You know, like, and then also keep in mind as soon as you throw a suppressor on that 10-3, mm -hmm. you're looking at a longer gun. So, For sure. Um, I think if you're if you're if your general purpose build out is in more of an environment where you are talking about you're very urban, right? Then that 10 3 11 5 would probably be your per se general purpose slash recce rifle yeah. right i mean uh if, you, if you're if you're a really closed in environment but we're not 
for the most part. Our, our environment's pretty wide open where we happen to be yeah. here in Florida, where we have the ability to shoot the land that's surrounding us. There's yeah. a lot of farmland. Uh, there's a lot of heavy, thick uh, swamp land. So if you're in the mountains, once again, you probably want to take into consideration as far as that ma- uh, magnification to be able to see distances. Uh, and then also ballistics that can yeah. carry you out. Right. Yeah, I mean, the ballistics is is really the the big thing like i mean you you're real big on on shooting long range and understanding you know how much energy is that projectile carrying yeah exactly i mean it when does it start to become anemic when does it Mm. start to fall into that transonic range where it starts to unstable you know where it's no longer stable uh what kind of energy is it carrying at 600 yards is it is it carrying enough energy still to inflict you know proper damage right or is it uh or basically you're just slinging lead down range to suppress some type of cover hmm. yeah i mean yeah. that's that's we some... can all go make hits at six seven hundred yards with 11.5 yeah but are we carrying enough energy down there right and not everybody's carrying a1 no and not everybody's <laughs> carrying a1 no exactly yeah. so yeah. most guys are shooting 55 grain yep. or just standard xm 855 or ss 109 yeah uh 62 grain stuff which is which you know it's great yeah, but it's not moving like a one. No, I mean the I kind mean, of velocity. It's a tool ammo. I mean, we were shooting that as a softer shooting. Like it's a little bit slower. I feel like it's a lot more common of a round. But the tool ammo, what was? Yeah, that? you're gonna see probably a lot of guys that have uh, stockpiled stuff like that, like a uh, tool, uh, steel case, Barnall, all those different loads like that. Um, what about ammo capability wise goes within your group? Is that something to consider? I mean, yeah, absolutely. Are there better, harder hitting bullets yeah. that are? You think 308 would be a better choice? I think it would be, but your group has to have it. You yeah. know, like if you don't have um, the ammo to continue the fight, like mm-hmm. if you don't have the ammo sustainability, it, you could, you know, you you're definitely going to carry. It's you're definitely going to carry round. less ammo. Yeah, you can carry less. You're correct. definitely going to carry less. Chris likes to say, "Give him all the weight." <laughs> <So>. <laughs> can Chris's carry 308 load yeah. outweighs like what? I don't even know. A bajillion pounds. A bajillion pounds. Yeah. It's so heavy. <laughs> yeah, it's so heavy. But you guys would probably all love it. It's a freaking M1A. Yeah, M1A. Hard-hitting rifle. Hard-hitting, hard-missing rifle. But do you think he's carrying that through the swamp? No. No. Yeah, it, maybe with, like, some floaties on it to help <laughs> push it through the water. It's, it's his uh, his canoe, his, his paddle. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, I mean, um, I think... That's something else, like kind of going back a little bit to the environment. Um, if you're in an urban environment, that is also an environment. You know what I'm saying? Something oh, yeah, for you sure. you need to also consider. Uh, and what what would you put on that type of rifle? Like what would you recommend I, if you're I running would, something in an urban environment? It, if I was in my urban environment, I probably would run like something like a 10-3 or 11-5 um, with a... With a red dot or a reflex uh, type type optic in EOTech or an aim point or something of that nature, uh, and I'd probably would throw a magnifier behind it. Mm-hmm. Not that it would be something that you necessarily need, right? Because you can probably identify PID targets for the most part in an urban environment. I mean, what are you going to have a hundred yard, maybe two hundred yards yeah. down some long street or something like that? Right. If you're talking about you know it's a it's a long road, yeah. you could probably still see but uh having a magnifier just kind of aids it gives you a little bit more capability makes you feel a little more comfortable yeah especially if also if you're standing at ground level and you're looking up at a structure that's super tall exactly 100 200 yards away correct to a window or something like that Uh, so a magnifier i'd probably throw on it and it's always something that if you needed to you could ditch out of the way i mean it just flips out of the way relatively pretty simple and easy uh it makes you feel comfortable it gives you that warm and fuzzy feeling having a magnifier on your gun yeah it does i mean (laughs) you know what's funny is like we were you know, doing some recce training and, and, and kind of just sneaking around and had like a whole little thing that we were just experimenting with and training with. And it's funny how we would look like, say, we, you know, there's a, uh, you know, a bad guy or whatever. And we would actually look and use the magnifier to see what direction he was looking. Cause you could see a person. Yeah, there, exactly. Versus like, just what direction are they looking at our yeah. direction? Can we move? Like, yeah. or do are we they, need to are stay they coming our direction? Or are they, yeah. are they heading? Yeah. Versus just like, I think a lot of people get wrapped around the axle of like PID, what he's got in his hands. Yeah. Like, no, sometimes does I just need to look a, and see where he's high looking. point in his hand. Yeah. Does he have a high point? <laughs> <laughs> no, he's got Chris's M one. Thank goodness. <laughs> just kidding. Uh, 
but the biggest thing is we would we would like use the magnifier to see his orientation, see his face, see if he's able to is looking in our direction. See, okay, he just turned his head. Perfect. Hey, move. Go across that. You know, LBA. Um, so, you know, you can definitely start thinking outside the box with that. And obviously, an LPVO would give you a little bit better uh, yeah, view of something sure. of that of that nature, um, and kind of build your essay or situational awareness a little bit better. Um, but it's also weighty. And I think the biggest thing that we're trying to get away from is just following a trend because you see it on. Yeah, I think that's that's the big thing that's what, that we're trying to accomplish here with this is is putting putting this thought process out there. What what when you're putting a rifle together, whether you're building it out or you're buying a brand new rifle off the shelf and you have to outfit it with some optics and some lights and slings and yeah. everything else uh, fully kitted out what 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 is your true goal with it what are you what are you really doing with it yeah are you trying to are you trying to set up a true recce rifle right where you're actually going to do a recon or are you really just trying to build a rifle out that gives you the most capability within that one package that yeah. way if you had to grab something you know everyone says oh i got a truck gun you yeah. know um your real go bag gun yeah your real locker that you're going to go grab out of because you don't know what you're getting into yeah what are you going to grab? Right. And and I think that's something to take into true consideration over necessarily just saying, hey, I'm putting together a recce rifle. Right. I think I think that's where the drawing the line as far as separating the two and and saying, hey, you know what? You're probably not truly building. I know I can tell you myself, I truly wasn't building a recce rifle. Yeah. I was truly building a rifle to try to to give me the most effectiveness out at 600 yards right give me the most amount of magnification without adding too much weight mm. to my gun which the eotech voodoo does that it, very well yes it does it does very well uh the eotech voodoo does it very well it's not extremely heavy and then still having a dot that i can run and and then my capability wise goes i want that dot to actually be set in a position where if i needed to run it with some type of gas mask or I do have nods right. that I can still run it with nods. Right. So I mounted mine on top versus going off to a 45 degree offset right. or some type of offset. I know you see a lot of guys running offsets. Yeah. I don't think there's anything wrong with that if that fits you. But for me, I mean, you, you pointed me onto this. You're like, hey, how, how are you going to shoot passive on that offset? Yeah, y- yeah you could do it. Yeah. It takes a lot more training. Yeah. How does that feel when you throw a gas mask on? It, it, it really wasn't comfortable at all. No. Versus, hey, you know, transition it back on top. So I was just looking for a rifle to build out that gave me the capability to use my nods under if I chose to. Mm. Gas mask. Right. Gave me some ballistics downrange for some capability. Yeah. And then a little bit of magnification without creating excess amount of weight on my rifle yeah and that's that's something that like kind of what you're you're hitting on is you're building something that's not just got one role right it can it definitely doesn't have just one role you know like i mean even to the point of putting a dot on top versus cannon off to a side i can fulfill more roles and more needs having it in in this position versus the other like that is the mindset that you need to have when building out your rifle like if it only does one job, then I need to find something different to make it do Correct. two jobs or more. Exactly. And the, and the magnification, the other thing that, that a lot of times people leave out when you're talking about magnification, everybody wants to go to that PID target wise yeah. goes. But what about just needing to engage a more precise target? Right. Needing to zoom in a little more so I can engage that, that smaller target. I mean, we even had some people saying like, oh man, I, you can't, you can't, you know, you have just a red dot. You can't go past 300 yards. No. Like how many times do you hear that? Like, all the time. Yeah, it's all the like, time. Bro, I, like, the number one question I get this. asked in the shop, especially with newer shooters, yeah. and I get asked a lot, well, I, I really want to shoot 100 yards with it. <laughs> Trust me, bud. You'll be able you'll to You'll be do able it. to hit 100 yards. 100 yards is really not that far. 100 yards is not far at all. I throw a football over the mountains. And then they go out, and they physically see – we take them out. They physically see 100 yards. They put it in perspective. And they physically shoot, and they're like, "Oh, wow, that was really easy." Yeah. And then you throw them on at 200, and they're like, "Oh, wow, that's, that's easy." That's it. Yeah. 300. Yeah. Three, uh, is out to 300 is really easy. 
Yeah. To be honest with you. Yeah. you, we could take a pretty base level shooter, a newer shooter, and put them on at 100, 200, and 300. Yeah. As long as they are stable and they can obviously have some fundamental skills where they could press the trigger. I mean, it's it's part of our zero regimen. Now. Correct. You know, within exactly. our little we with zero our group rifles. Of guys, we go zero rifle at what fifty to two hundred. Yep, we immediately walk over to the five hundred yard bay and take it all the way out to five. Every single time. Yep. Uh, we zero. We walk over to five hundred. We confirm. Yep. And we confirm all the way out to five hundred. Yep. And consequently, that also lets us know how tight our zero is. Right. So. Yeah, I mean, I think if you are looking, also, like I said, another aspect to think about. One, we talked about compatibility. Yeah. Two, we talked about our environment, and and fulfilling numerous roles. Right. Another thing to also consider is aftermarket support and back-end support. Are there supplies? If I, if I have a part that breaks, yeah, is this gun sure. so bougie that I can't find it without breaking the bank or it's just not available? No, you're, you're 100% right. Like I love, um, me and Ben were talking about this uh, with the MCX, the Virtus. Like both of us love our Virtus. Oh, the MCX. I mean, it's, oh, yeah, it's, it's an awesome system, but... I don't run mine that often. Yeah. He's no longer running his that often. Right. Because you start wearing out parts. How easy am I going to be able to replace that barrel? Right. Uh, we shoot a lot. We yeah. put a lot of rounds down range. So it is, it, it's, it's a, it's a feasible thing for us to wear a barrel out. Mm -hmm. So how easy is that going to be? Yeah. It's, it's really not. Uh, until SIG catches up with the demand for the market, you're really probably not going to have excess amount of parts laying around. No. Versus my typical you know m4 m16 ar15 platform i mean i have we have lots of parts laying yeah. around for that right yeah. now we're, we're in a particular market where there are tons of availability for extra bolts extra carriers extra gas rings i mean yeah. we go through gas rings like crazy we got a whole bin full of them yeah i mean i would even say i would even go to say like if you start looking at what like law enforcement or military are using there's going to be a lot of spare parts laying around. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Like extra Tons. parts and things that, like Beretta. I guarantee you, you'll be able to find Beretta parts for a while. Beretta M92. For sure. It's it's kind of like a, your your pistol, once again, yeah. like a Glock. You're yeah. going to find Glock, Glock parts everywhere. for days. Sig, Glock parts for days. You're going to find a bunch of stuff for the M17 and the M18. So yeah. these are things to also consider, like how readily available are spare parts and how much, you know, am I going to break the bank? Can I have a, big, a bin of backup parts? Um, for my equipment, you know, if something goes down, is it hard broke or can I repair it? Yeah. Just in training. I mean, how many times have we seen our system go down where we need to run back in to the armor's bench and just replace <laughs> swap some, out a whole bolt, yeah. swap out a whole bolt real quick. Yeah. I mean, I carry an extra bolt in my yeah. bag Yeah. with me. Uh, so yeah, having that, having that system that is relatively easy to get parts for is something to definitely take into consideration versus having a, you know, yeah, there's nothing wrong with a 308 pattern AR. Yeah. But you're not going to run all over the place and find parts for that. Yeah. And it, also, we are like we already hit on weight. Yeah, you know, you're, weight you're increasing ammo, your weight. How much can you carry? You're decreasing your ammunition. Yeah. Yeah. What was it? Um, what, who, what, who was it just saying in one of the videos? Was it, was it Grand Thumb that was talking about as far as uh, like statistically wise goes who can carry the most amount of ammo? Oh, yeah. I mean, an ammo superiority. Like, if you yeah. have the most ammo and you can last the longest, then you're probably going to win the fight. Like, yeah. Uh, and you know, what about who utilizes that ammo properly, too? Yeah. yeah. Ben was talking about that, how you would, whoever utilizes that ammo best, right? And how it can serve it. So maybe marksmanship. Yeah. Uh, hitting your so, target. So that kind of comes back into that circle of something to, to consider when you're, when you're building your general purpose rifle. You're building yourself at the same time, right? Yeah, invest I mean, in yourself. You're investing in yourself. So yeah. we talked about it in One Warrior, One Sword. Yep. Investing into yourself, uh, that marksmanship, that ability to be able to physically make hits. Yeah. Because uh, if you can make hits, you're probably going to utilize your ammo more properly. Yeah. Versus... And you'll spend less money. Yes, you'll spend a lot less money. Yeah, versus going out and blowing blowing yeah. through an entire magazine to hit yeah. a target at 135 yards. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. How many times have we seen that? Yeah, or you know, your scope's loose. Too. Your scope's loose. Yeah, we've seen <laughs> that a lot. Terrible. Yeah. Uh, so but, maintenance on your equipment yeah. too. Checking your stuff, having your checklist as yeah. you go through something yeah. to consider. Having that checklist and also um, with kind of going with the environment. Like I know, you know. A lot of people, we, we talk about it one way and one sword, collect, which is fine. But if you're building out this general purpose tool, 
Don't be afraid to do things, to rough it up, take it into training, beat it around, or like paint it. Like I always tell you, hey, do you like that firearm? Is it is it good? Are you planning on keeping it? Then commit and just paint it yeah. to your environment. Like we did that test where we put all the guns or the rifles inside of a field and different portions of around the ranch to see what's what's shiny what's not blending in what's black that's just standing out uh and we we painted the rifles in a way where they could blend in with our environment yeah that's something to take into consideration when you're when you're when you are trying to camouflage yeah uh, your system right are you camouflage are you painting your rifle yeah i have rifles that i've painted just for kind of a cool factor yeah i like the way it looks yeah but does that really break up the pattern yeah. of my environment yeah. versus my true, what I would call my general purpose rifle, what I would probably grab in a go situation, is it going to be broken up in my environment? Yeah. If you're in an inver- in urban environment, then you need to reconsider as far as how it's painted. Right. You know, where are you going to uh, spend majority of that you're, time? If you're in an area where you have some really harsh winters, yeah. you know, you're, you're probably actually going to probably repaint your rifle multiple times a year. I'm going to paint it straight black so I get in all the firefights. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I'm making hard contact. <laughs> if you have six foot of snow outside and your rifle's black. black. <laughs> uh, if you actually have four seasons of weather, yeah, you're probably going to want to repaint your rifle multiple times, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Versus us, we have one season. Yeah. Hot. All the time. All the time. Green. Green. Everywhere. <laughs> Green uh, everywhere. Yeah. yeah we I mean, actually, once you get low to the ground, we have a lot of brown. Yeah. No, yeah. there's a lot of browns yeah. and tans yeah. that yeah. We, we didn't really realize uh, until you start getting into No, the we started really. realizing how quickly we're running out of brown and tan paint. Yeah, right. So, so versus true. green. Green's still always on the shelf. Yeah, I know. Because you throw green down on the ground when you're low to the ground. Yeah. It actually kind of stands out, out a little bit versus yeah. the versus the different shades of brown. Yeah. They, they break it up. They break up the pattern. They blend in a little yeah. better. And, and, and camouflaging and painting your rifle and camouflaging your equipment, it's not like a recce. That's just a survivability skill. Yeah, that's just like, survivability. That's you just, need to be using it for hunting. Like, I mean, how many people, I could tell you growing up hunting, Yeah, we used to wrap our scopes and you know burlap and things yeah. like that. We would we would do all kinds of different things to, to camouflage ourselves. That yeah. was just, I'm stalking an animal. And I want to make it more difficult for that animal to see me. Yeah. So what do I do? I camouflage myself and I camouflage my environment. Your scent. My scent. Yeah. Everything about it. Yeah. Uh, so that's just survivability. Uh, playing uh, you know, When we were younger, we were playing airsoft yeah. or paintball back then because yeah. airsoft really wasn't around. You would camouflage it because we, we played in a more rural area. Yeah. Uh, we would camouflage ourselves. We would paint our paintball guns up. Yeah. Instead of just having a plain black paintball gun. Yeah. We would paint our paintball guns up. So yeah. that's something that you, people have been doing for the longest period of time. Right. And it, and you really see it catching on in rifles now. Yeah. Finally. Finally. Yeah. Finally. And and so that's something that you know we we wanted to bring this subject up because I feel like it's like a popular thing right now. People are starting to just be more prepared um and in the environment that we're in time wise like it's just good to be ready and be 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 prepared and be equipped right so um for future episodes if you have something specific that you guys think we should hit on or talk about whether that's just like camouflaging your equipment skill sets into just readiness survivability um a title what are what are some other things roy yeah, I mean, uh, just uh, just the questions in general about yeah. this uh, that we're experimenting with. Uh, if you if you think of something that you would, not everybody has the opportunity to, to be blessed with what we can sure. do. Sure. Okay. We we have a, a beautiful facility that we have the, the, the ability to try different things at. Yep. We which is JTAC Ranch, by yeah, the way. Yeah, we're we're in this all the time, so we're we're all about testing new things. Yeah. So if there's something that you want to see us test. By all means, leave it down there in the comment section. Let us know. Uh, we're going to continue experimenting around with camouflaging our stuff in our particular area. Um, night capability. We're night moving capability, in, uh, yeah. What it, What are our capabilities with that rifle, with that yep. general purpose rifle? Yep. And Rux, I can t- honestly probably Rux tell packs. you, our general purpose rifle, there's a good possibility before we get to the end of the series, it may change. Mm, right? Yeah. No, absolutely. I mean, it could. Yeah, it could. As we experiment. Yeah. yeah. I mean, nothing is set in stone. No. You know? um, yep. 
So yeah, go ahead and comment below what you guys think, what you guys want to see, your experiences. If you have experiences, share them. Like this is the community to share it in uh, and equip all of us, right? For sure. Nobody, 100%. There's we, a lot of guys out there with a lot of knowledge. Yeah. And I'm sure that there's at least one listening. Yeah. Hopefully. Maybe two. <laughs> Maybe me. Maybe, <laughs> Maybe me. <and> me. Roy. <laughs> uh, share share, uh, share your, your stories. If yeah. you're in a different environment too, jump down there and let us know where you're at. Yeah. That'd be pretty cool. Yeah, that would be cool. Yeah. Let see. us know. Let us know what your setup is. What yeah. is your general purpose rifle? What yeah. is, what is your, as we get into your, your, your go bag, your kit, your, all that kind of stuff, uh, what, what your setup is based on your environment. Yeah. Cause that'd yeah. be cool. Uh, we're, we're stuck here in the swampy lands of Florida. Yeah. <laughs> but it's beautiful. It's the it is beautiful. Day. While you Break guys in. are freezing, yeah. we're sitting on the beach. Yeah. And so drinking old fashioned. No, drinking so, old fashioned. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, if you guys want to, check out our Instagram page to see any upcoming information on new episodes or as well as back end portions of what the episodes are about or any updates to equipment or gear we post on Instagram. Go follow us there. Um, obviously this video is sponsored by gun and ammo shop.com gun and ammo shop.com. So go check that out as well as, uh, if you really like the channel and you like the content that Roy and I are talking about and you want to hear more, please subscribe, hit the notification bell and follow us. It really helps out as well as comment and share your experiences. We love to hear from you guys. So in closing, uh, we've got more that we're going to talk about on this stuff in next series, but yeah, there's a lot to talk about in this yeah. series where this is going to, we can, we can fill this definitely easily with four to five episodes. Yeah. So I'm looking easy. forward to it. Yeah. Cool, man. Well, uh, from Roy and Eric, we will see you on the next time. Be safe and stay ready.